Nowadays we have radar sensors in space that allow us to operationally monitor and map the Earth's forest. We have since the beginning of the 90s systems using C-band wavelength where we very well know the interaction with the, with the canopy volume and we have uh, systems using L-band, the longer wavelength that reacts rather with the tree stems uh, being able to map above ground biomass which represents the carbon being stored in forests. So with this start of the Copernicus satellites um, we can now go on to monitor also subtle changes perhaps caused by degradation, um, by forest cutting, uh, by forest fires um, and also monitor regrowth and the efforts that are being undertaken to restore our planet's forests. Forests are a particularly interesting challenge for radar remote sensing. Radar offers some particularly unique properties that allow you to do mapping of forests that you can't do with any other kind of remote sensing. Now, why would we be interested in mapping forests globally? Well, there's a number of very current topics that make it quite significant that we can measure and monitor and map, not just where the forests are, but some of their properties like the forest biomass, so how much bulk material is in the forest. Terrestrial carbon dynamics is one of the key topics in terms of feeding into climate change uh, models, whereby we want to know what's happening with the forests because that helps us to understand the dynamics of carbon on the land surface. So there are some key scientific questions to do with terrestrial carbon dynamics that can be answered by mapping and monitoring not just where the forests are, but how much forest there is there and how much of it is changing. There is also a growing need for sustainable forests in a, a package of trying to have sustainable landscapes. And in that context, there are also schemes such as the reduced emissions from deforestation and degradation that are aiming to offer economic incentives to protect the forest. And all of these policies are evidence-based and so require measurements of where the forests are and how they are changing. Now radar can offer a, a number of different ways to make measurements of forests. Now short wavelengths like this, so this is our C-band wave about five centimeters, it doesn't penetrate very much into the forest canopy uh, and it has difficulty differentiating forests from even short vegetation. And therefore in an individual image at short wavelengths it's quite tricky to, to be able to map or determine any of the properties of a, of a forest. However, what we can do with the short wavelengths is that we can look over a long time series and typically forests don't change that much over a year, whereas agricultural fields and other parts of the landscape do change quite considerably in terms of their moisture content and the vegetation growth. 
And so you can use time series to differentiate where the forest is and where the forest isn't, even when you're using short wavelengths. Over very long time scales, you might be able to use short wavelengths to see other subtler changes, but it's quite tricky because you're not really seeing the bulk properties of the forest when you're using short wavelengths. There is an advantage to using short wavelengths when we use radar interferometry, because then we see near the top of the forest canopy. And so we can use the radar interferometry to determine the height of the forest. Now, in order to determine the actual height of the forest, you also need to know the ground surface and short wavelength radar, because it can't see down to the, earth, the ground surface, doesn't actually tell you directly what the height of the forest is. But you can potentially use that for looking at height changes or if you have information about the ground surface already, you can determine the difference between the short wavelength interferometric height and the ground surface to determine or estimate a forest canopy height. Typically, many forest applications are done with very longer wavelength radar. So L band or P band, so 23 centimeters to 70 centimeters. And that's when you start to see deeper into the forest canopy and the signal that is returning is more indicative of the bulk properties of the forest. In this way, we can do estimates just by looking at the intensity of the signal coming back. So the, the backscatter brightness can give us some indication of how much biomass there is in the forest. So the bulk material in tons per hectare. And that's a very useful indicator of how much carbon is in the forest. We might also use a polarimetric information. So the orientation of the wave as it enters the forest can give us some indication of the structural properties of the forest or how much forest layer there is above the Earth's surface. We can combine radar interferometry with very short wavelengths that look at the top of the canopy with very long wavelengths like P-band that see down to the Earth's surface because it penetrates through the forest canopy. And then if we can generate a digital surface model for the top of the canopy and the ground surface, we can subtract one from the other, and that gives us an estimate of the forest height as well. And from forest canopy height measurements, we can also estimate the biomass in terms of how much material is in the forest. By combining the polarimetric information and the interferometric information, we can also do a technique called polarimetric interferometry. And polarimetric interferometry is also a means of determining the height of a forest canopy. Overall, the key thing about radar is that the longer wavelengths allow us to see deeper into the forest canopy. And it's that information which is entirely new and novel 
and we can't get from other forms of satellite-based measurement. We might also use a polar metric information. So the orientation of the wave as it enters the forest can give us some indication of the structural properties of the forest or how much forest layer there is above the Earth's surface. We can combine radar interferometry with very short wavelengths that look at the top of the canopy with very long wavelengths like P-band that see down to the Earth's surface because it penetrates through the forest canopy. And then if we can generate a digital surface model for the top of the canopy and the ground surface, we can subtract one from the other and that gives us an estimate of the forest height as well. And from forest canopy height measurements, we can also estimate the biomass in terms of how much material is in the forest. By combining the polar metric information and the interferometric information, we can also do a technique called polar metric interferometry. And polar metric interferometry is also a means of determining the height of a forest canopy. Overall, the key thing about radar is that the longer wavelengths allow us to see deeper into the forest canopy. And it's that information which is entirely new and novel and we can't get from other forms of satellite-based measurement.